in 7.3, they start talking about polar coordinates. That should also be a review from trigonometry. Yeah, R theta. Yep. That's, yeah, man. I think that's actually better. You know? It's pretty nice. Um, yeah, like where we spend most of our time describing points with an x and a y coordinate. Is it recording? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're recording. Um, should be. And um, when I when I when I specify an x and a y, it's understood that the x is really the distance to the y-axis, and the sort of it could be negative. But if I'm in the first quadrant, it's the distance to the y-axis. If I'm in the first quadrant, the y-coordinate is the distance to the x-axis, right? But yeah, they could be negative, so if it's negative, it's going the opposite direction, away from the axis. So this is x, and this is y. But when you're doing it in polar coordinates, you're doing something different. You're saying, okay, let's just take a direct route and call it R. Um, but if, I, if that's all the information I gave you, you wouldn't know which, you know how far to go, you don't know which way to go. This takes us back to uh, our last physics class. Yeah, and I was gonna say when you, yeah. Side note, like you know, Side you note. showed us the integral, like what work equals the integral of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I'm smashing problems that. Nice. You know that uh, the dudes took, they did that complicated way. And I was like, no. But I was gonna say when you do force, it has to be written mm -hmm. in r theta, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be. Well, I, that's how I wrote it in polar coordinates. It yeah. made it easier for me. I mean, yeah. almost every, that whole class we was trying to do it be the methods and the means you told us to do, but yeah. she was like, look, this is and I was like, algebra based. And that's physics. why I was arguing with him, like, nope, not mm -hmm. doing that. No. And he said he wants to be a mathematician now. Yeah, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. That's going to be computer science. Sorry for the side note. No worries. So, yeah, to, to describe a point clearly, yeah. Um, without any ambiguity, you need to specify both the distance from the origin and the angle and standard position. Given those two things, we have a, it's, it's clear which point you're talking about. Uh, it also gives you the ability to represent certain curves a lot easier um, in polar coordinates than it would be in rectangular coordinates. Um, let's, let's compare and contrast. Things that are really, really easy to describe in rectangular coordinates, I could say, uh, Graph y equals three. Yeah. That's pretty easy, right? Yeah. Of course I don't want. Yeah. So there it is. And what if I say, uh, what if I ask you to do something in reverse? I mean, what if I give you the graph and I ask for the equation that generates this line, this vertical line? X intercept at negative one. X, X equals negative one. one. Yeah. Pretty easy. <laughs> so broad. So yeah. So like rectangular courts are really great for lines. They really it really shines. If you're really doing any application that involves a line, you're probably going to use rectangular coordinates. But what if I asked you to graph r equaling two? So there would be a circle, a circle with radius two. Yeah, it's really it's like it's super easy to write the equation of a circle in polar coordinates. It's just there it is. Now, if the circle wasn't centered at the origin, it might it would be a little more complicated. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy. It'll, certainly a lot easier than it is. It's kind of awkward in rectangular coordinates actually. And if I ask you to graph. Theta equaling pi over six. What would that look like? With a radius of one, it'd be. No, no, at that point, point it's spiral. What? It's spiral out from the center, right? It's not a spiral. No, it'd be just at one point. Because the spiral has a lot of points on it, all with different angles. Oh, yeah, okay, so. Would it be a. Yeah, it'd be whatever sine of pi over six, cosine of pi over six, it'd be a dot, right? It's more than, than a dot. dot. There's lots of points that has an angle of pi over six. R can be anything. Oh, it's not a pi over R is one here? Oh. Okay, okay, so, so for, for the same reason that theta wasn't implied to be pi over six over here, 
They could be anything, right? Yeah, that's, that's why, why we picked up the server. So would it be that horizontal line, the rest of the final six? Would it be no, it would be from the origin forever. So, so forever. if R is equal to one, oh, yeah, okay. R doesn't have to be one, that will give us one, one of the points of the If, if R is equal to one, that would be on the inner circle, circle but at an angle of pi over six, six, about 30 degrees, about there. there. Right. But there's, there's lots, lots of points that has an angle of pi over six. six. Like, for this one, like this one, 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 one R equals one half, half. Right. and this, this one over here, R equals two. two. So forever, right. Even when R equals negative one. one. Yeah. <laughs> so, is that what I said? So actually, polar coordinates are actually pretty useful for lines also, as long as it's the line going through the origin. Right? Okay. So yeah, so when you're dealing with lines like this, or, or circles, or especially if you have a, a problem that has a, a line going through the origin and a circle centered at the origin, then <laughs> polar is the way to go, for yeah. sure, you know? So, so yeah, those are, the, those are some of the, it's also a compare and contrast of when one system is better than the other. Uh, but yeah, there's, we know there's plenty of graphs that are, aren't any of these, All right? So you might have to think a little more carefully at, you know, with other applications. Um, some of the skills that we talked about in trigonometry that you want to have at your fingertips here. If I give you a point in rectangular coordinates, can you tell me what the point is in polar coordinates? And vice versa, if I give it to you in polar coordinates, can you give me the point in rectangular coordinates? R cosine. Yeah. Yeah, so one place is easier to go than the other. If I give it to you in polar coordinates, it's pretty easy to find the coordinates in rectangular uh, coordinates. I can just say, in general, you feel free to say that x equals r cosine theta. It sounds like we're probably using this in your physics class. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, if you have R theta, it's really easy. It's really easy to go to X Y. But what if I give you a point? You know, like I'll just make up two numbers. Um, yeah, just give me a positive number and a negative number. Anything. Five. Negative seven. Perfect. So that's the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So in this case. Um, I'm thinking of, I'm imagining a point over here at positive five and negative seven. That would be about right here. But what would that be in polar coordinates? Theta would be the R tangent mm -hmm. of. Yeah. yeah. And then R would be the square root of five squared. 25. Yeah. Nice. Plus 49. <laughs> Plus 49. Yeah. I would just kind of draw this uh, right triangle here. You know, that's going to be a negative angle. But if I treat all these side lengths as positives, then I, whatever I'm trying to get, I can make it negative in the end. Right. So if this is 5 and this is 7, our tangent of. Yeah. Uh, seven seven five. Five. So I usually write, I just say tangent theta equals 7, seven over 5. And? The uh, and five squared plus seven squared equals r squared because of the right triangle. And so from these two equations, you can solve for theta and r, right? And I guess I would make that a negative theta, you know, in this case. So yeah, so it's a little it's a little trickier to go this way, but it can be done. And you'll need to be able to do it, right? <laughs> And that's 7.3. I'm rushing through it because we've seen it before, but we'll practice it unless questions are just get stuck on things. I want to accelerate to 7.4. That's what we're doing calculus. Yeah. 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 So, so running, running with these ideas, ideas now, at this point, going beyond what we've done before. before. If I give you a, a, a graph in the polar coordinates, such as, I pick one out. 
I did pick one out, such as uh, example 7.17 from section uh, 7.4. There it is. Okay, nice. Find the area between two polar curves. The area outside the cardioid, that one, and inside the circle. Is that right? You have a picture of a graph? Hmm? You have a picture of a graph? Yeah. From 7.17? Example 7.17, yeah. From section 7.4. If you have the same PDF as me, it's on page 667. Yeah, okay, so what are the equations again? Uh, the equation is r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta, and the inside circle is r equals 6 sine theta. Nice. Very nice. We can wrap this. So, okay, so this is, this is it. Both of these have, have two graphs. With the help of a graphing calculator, you can come up with it pretty quick. Without the help of a graphing calculator, you might have to think a little. Right? I'm thinking, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, if I know what the graph of this looks like. That looks like a sine curve stretched by two and shifted up by two. That means it's going to go like, this between zero and four, oscillating around two. Is that right? What? This one has the yeah circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just trying to come up with that. If I didn't oh, have that. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. I was about to fire up Desmos, but since it's not working, <laughs> this is kind of like at least how I do it. Yeah, you know? side. Yeah, trying. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, I know what that looks like. But that's not a y. That's not an x. But I can, it kind of tells me what, what what to do because this is if this is two pi and this is pi pi over two and three pi over two, you know. I can see that in the first quadrant, I'm starting with a radius of one, ending up with no two, and ending up with a radius of four. So it looks to me like the graph is going to begin two steps out and end at least in the first quadrant four steps out. So something like that. But as I traverse the second quadrant, as I start to rotate through there, it's generating various R's. And they're going to go from four back down to two. I can see that. This is like my math. So over here, it looks something like that, right? And then as I continue on to the third quadrant, that is to say from pi to three pi to two, it's going from two down to zero. So, right. And then as I go from two to the fourth quadrant, from zero back to two, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> well, they, 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 they fall into these general shapes. So if I have more knowledge of types of shapes to expect, that helps a little too. Um, yeah, and similarly, if I was to do something similar here, I know that if I was to graph the rectangular coordinates, six sine x, that's going to have an amplitude of six. It's not shifted at all, but it is going to oscillate between six and negative six, right? Yes. So something like this. So in the first quadrant, I'm going to go between 0 and 6, right? So the graph is going to start here at 0. And as I go through, it's going to increase all the way up to 6. So, oops, that's not 6, that's 5. And as I continue on into the second quadrant, it's going to go from 6 back down to 0. I've done enough of these to know that it's going to be a circle. <laughs> and as I go into the third quadrant, it goes from 0 to negative 6. So technically, on the third quadrant, I'll pick, but all the radii are negative. That's why it gets graphed 
Although I'm in the third quadrant, the graph appears in the first quadrant. And it's actually traversing a circle a second time. When as I go through the fourth quadrant, it's going to come back still negative. So yeah, so this is a, so these two equations give me two graphs. I'm interested in what? In this case, it says find the area outside the cardioid. I think it says and inside the circle. Which that is to say, chopping up into rectangles, I'm chop, the, 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 these are called sectors. The vocabulary word for trigonometry as well. Yeah, arcs and I'm chopping them up into sectors, right? Right. And I'm trying to find the volume of each sector, and I'm adding up the sum total of all those sectors to get the total area. That's my strategy. <coughs> right? Trig. <laughs> Trig. So I guess we might need to remember the formula for the area of a sector from trigonometry. Radius, arc, arc length. Yeah. Yeah. So the area of a sector, something like this, right? You'd have to know the radius, right? And you'd have to know the angle in radians, yeah. right? The, the equation is a lot simpler because the radius. There's a formula for it. Degrees, but it's good at teachers. And because it's, it's too complicated, why bother? Right? It's not real math. It's not real math. Yeah, <laughs> degrees is not real math. Yeah, the way I remember it is, is, is almost reminds me of the formula for the area of a triangle. Yeah, one half r. Yeah, one half base times height. But in this case, it's one half r times s. This is right. Which is a circle, insane. <laughs> and since S is theta R, then I think the one that was in the book actually said one half theta R squared. Right? One way or another, you gotta remember it. I obviously don't. I have to, I have to re reinvent it each time. <laughs> so, as you can see, so I can use this formula for this sector, which is including as a part of the area that I don't want to include, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of this sector and subtract from it the area of this sector. That will give you the area of that. I guess it's no longer a sector, a little piece of a sector, right? <coughs> I'm going to do the same all the way throughout, I'm going to add them up, right? 
So in each of these, I'll just write it out like this. I'll say it's going to be um, one half theta r squared, right? Actually, it's um, theta is yeah delta theta. So the argument is actually delta theta. R squared is going to be given by that. I think here um, I'm going to call this uh, R one squared, right? Because that's the R coming from from this curve right here, right? I'll call this R one theta. I'll label this one right here with R two theta, right? I have to make a distinction so I can just subtract. So this would be the area of that big sector. I'm going to subtract from that R2 squared delta theta. That's the area of just one of those pieces of a sector. And I'm just going to add all of that. <coughs> and to do so, notice could, I could do so by just simply writing one half sigma r1 squared minus r2 squared delta theta. And if that's not good enough, I can make the estimate better by making delta theta smaller. And when I do, d theta, this become, if it becomes infinitesimally small, d theta, yeah, becomes a, sigma becomes a, a smooth sigma. Pointy sigma becomes a smooth sigma. And this is just going to be the same formula. So that's the basic idea. There's some technical details to polish out or to work out before we can actually get a number. You have to know where they meet because that's yeah. where theta is. I need to know where to begin and end, yeah. Yeah. So, hmm, interesting. Well, how should we do that? There's a, one of the, one of the topics covered in 7.3 that I didn't actually talk about is recognizing symmetry. With the benefit of this picture, you can see that this is symmetric. Right. 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 And with that symmetry, one way to do this would be to, instead of going from here to here, you need to specify the starting angle and the ending angle, right? I could just go from here to here and multiply by two. I'm sorry. On your integral, yeah. You did you change opposite one and opposite two, or I did. I don't know why. suggesting this idea of starting here and ending here so that I could just I figure I, once I know the area of this I can just double it. It might so I think that'll simplify our computations a little bit. Every second way one half, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I could put a two times this if I start, I still have to figure out where to start, but I can see that at least I'm ending at Start. That's the final piece of the puzzle. Is that an equal to? Yeah. Yeah, but how do you write polar coordinates equal to each other? Pretty easy. The same way you do with rectangular coordinates. You just pretend that 
R is f of x, right? Because the rated R1 is equal to R2 right here, right? Right, right. Okay. We're solving that equation. So one half sine. How convenient. They must, it's almost as if they just set it up so that it'll work out nicely. And sine theta one half is that. Pi of four, theta zero. No, no, pi of six. Pi of six, yeah. Pi of yeah. six and whatever. Yeah, I guess the nice thing about using symmetry is I don't have to worry about the other side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, we, uh, if, if I didn't use symmetry, then I'd have to think carefully about the other solutions to this equation besides that one. So it's pi minus pi over 6, which is... Yeah. So yeah, you got things like pi over 6, pi, pi over six. and 5 pi over 6, right? And everything else is co-terminal with those two, right? But for our purposes, so I only need... I only need this one. So already there's just one place where the symmetry saved us a little bit of work. It didn't stop us from doing work, actually, but it could have saved us some work. And it set us. The rest of it is math 152 stuff. Which you got some sign squares in there. So I might have to recall some of the things we learned back then. Right? I remember some of the things. Get it? This is one of the What's interesting about this is this is you know, just using the sectors as a reference is probably kind of a novelty, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, whoa, well, okay. Well, we would have thought of that. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, right. Yeah. I'm going to still. Did you still use rectangles? Yeah, if you do the integral of t plus 2, like y equals. Yeah. You yeah. could use integrals, but <laughs> I would have to put this into rectangular form. Right. And once I put it into rectangular form, I'd have to solve for y. And I. I'm pretty sure that was going to be very, very difficult. <laughs> even, even easier though. Uh -huh. Is it safe to assume that on this specific problem, uh -huh. that lower, what's it called? Cardioid. Cardioid. Yeah. Say it again. Cardioid. Thing. Uh, yeah, the lower. Yeah, the cardioid. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to assume that that shape is a perfect circle, still within the upper circle? Nope. It's not. That would be so, a good thing to investigate. You know, is it, I just want to say the area of that circle minus yeah. the area of another circle. I should I, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said anything. I should have said, you know, go home and figure it out. <laughs> right? If it was a circle, you'd have to have a central point from which every point on that curve is equidistant, right? And um, well, I am eighty percent sure that you won't be able to find such a point. Um, but yeah, I think you'd have to do some investigation though, for sure. So is that like my extra card on my next test? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, if it, if it was a circle, yeah. If this, so you're saying if, if this right here was a circle? Just that part right there? Yeah. Yeah, it almost seems like it could be. Yeah, it looks like, I'm just saying if I follow it, it looks like it. Oh, it, if, that, if it was a circle, there'd have to be some point maybe right here where this distance equals this distance equals that distance. Right. You know what I mean? So if it was a circle, there would have to be a point about right there. And you could figure it out, you know what I mean? Since this is like, you know, this is at 2, and this is over here at 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is at negative 0. I think you could figure out exactly where it is on here. And then once you do that, then you can pick a point right here and see if it's the same distance. Right. And uh, I suspect it won't. I, I suspect it'll be close, but it won't be perfect. All right, so what you're saying is don't, don't assume that it's a circle. Yep. At that point. So 
So yeah, that's how you find area. How about arc length? Right? Arc length is a... Uh, we learned about the that. The integral of one plus the square root of the derivative squared. Yeah. The square root of one plus the derivative squared. So if I have like a... Um, oh no, this surface area thing. If y equals f of x, and I specify some sort of a range, oops, a and b, let's say, right. that would be a curve that maybe starts here and ends there. I love my h to the, the length of that curve. Right. And we saw that it was given by the square root of 1 plus f prime of x square dx, right? From a to b. Talked about why I had to do with the Pythagorean theorem. But what is, um, well, since, since I have this drawn already, I was asking. Maybe I'd like to know the length of, well, I don't want to go along here, that's too easy, that's a circle. I don't need calculus for that. How about this? Yes, since I believe this is a circle, I might be interested in the arc length of the curve from here to here. Right? What is that arc? I wonder. We'll still go to the from pi over six to pi over two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can save myself a little time since I know it's at pi, starts at pi over oh, six. Oh, which you could plug in square root. Yeah, I mean, I could if I had a function of x. Yeah, but not here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so if I want to find not this area, But the arc length begins here and ends here. Well, I suppose I could use symmetry again, <laughs> right? But uh, yeah, but the tricky thing is like, how do I find the? Well, I guess I'm going to chop it up into little chunks and find the length of each of those chunks. Right. That would be the natural thing to do. That's what we. That's how where this came from. It was a similar type of logic, right? We chop, chop this up, right? So in the same way, if I was to chop these up into chunks, maybe I could find the length of each chunk and add them up. Right? Hmm. How would I do that? Well, each chunk is delta s, and s is r theta, right? Right. So delta r theta. Each chunk. If I, mag if I get out my magnifying glass, maybe that's one chunk right there. Wow, that's a huge magnifying <laughs> glass. <laughs> and if I and so when I use this method, I'm kind of assuming that this little chunk, which looks large, is a straight line. Or okay, right? Yeah. So it's really a bunch of a whole bunch of little straight lines. But I think the, the sum total of the length of those straight lines should be pretty close to the length of the curve. Right. And if it's not good enough, I'll just make the gaps even smaller. So let's just say it's like a straight line here. It's small enough that it appears to be a straight line. And um, the picture we drew before looked like this. I'll, let me use a delta before I go to D. Right? Hmm. But, but since, since I don't have x and y, I have r's and theta's, right? So how do I translate this? To polar coordinates. Well, since is that true? I'm trying to remember off head. I believe I can just use those equations that I erased. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I can use these. I want to see, see if I can remember, remember without looking. I'm trying to challenge myself. myself. I think. That's, 
So that, that means, means that, that delta, delta S, S. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good. Oh, well, that's, that's even better for R times. times. Delta theta. What do you have delta, delta, delta R too, right? Because you said it's not a circle. Yeah, yeah. But, but I can think, think of, of each of these. these. So, so okay. okay. I read really can't, can't what I said earlier. <laughs> I said these are straight lines. lines. I take, I take it, back. it back. They're not straight lines. lines. This, this is, is not, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, sure this is not a circle. circle. But I'm going to chop this up. Each section is going to be the R part of a circle. Okay, here. Do you know what I mean? So from here to here, this is delta theta. If I multiply by radius, which is from here to here, then I'm going to get a length of that R part of a circle. So, yeah, yeah. Because they're so close. It's a circle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, 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 that yeah, was, that was a, a, a good, good, good point, point right? right? I think this is much more, more promising and straightforward than what I had yeah. in my mind. I think I this would work too, too, but yeah, yeah so, so I can, can so it's, it's, it's just going to be, and I'm just going to add them up, right? So the sum of all these art artists could be accomplished by breaking up the angles and multiplying one by the other artists. As our chart changes, things can change a little bit as you go. So, so, in, so that so means that the, the, if you want the exact value, that's going to come from the Is that right? Is that right? Well, R R R is close to side by X. So yeah, yeah. It almost seems too simple. Let me let's see what the book <laughs> says. Let me see what the book says. Make sure I'm not lying well, to no, you. The R, the R would be this. Oh, oh, whatever the equation is. Yeah. But when you solve for, um, oh, see, they're doing they're doing what I wanted to do actually up there. That's interesting. Oh gosh! I'm saying my way works too. I'm gonna say my way. I'm my way saying. works too. I think. Yeah. I think you should have me publish. This book. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> no, Seems probably. like. Hmm. Yeah. Arc length and polar curves. The area between. Oh, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm Right, Mustang? Hmm? The moon of 
of the derivative of sine. sine is cosine. It's cosine. So the antiderivative anti of cosine, cosine is the negative sine. Right? And then the antiderivative, see, that's why I want to The derivative of sine is cosine. Yeah. So the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Yeah, and the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, cosine right? Yeah. Yeah. So minus. What do you do right here? Oh, two times. Busting out this calculator. Well, They got, oh wait, did they do it? I don't know if they even did it in the yeah, book. Yeah, they did not. Find the arc length of the cardio, oh, maybe they did. Oh, this says four pi. Definitely not. 16, it's close, four pi, 16. There's an area of the circle, oh no, that's the area. And they are going from zero to two pi. Oh, they're finding the, the length of the whole thing, actually. Wait, I don't, I'm not understanding how they write the problem in this book. Yeah, uh, I think it could have been asked clearer, but the, what I, what, the, what the problem I was posing was finding the arc, the arc length from here to here. Right. They're finding the arc length of the whole thing, all the way oh. there. You know what I mean? And they're getting 16. But I think they're using a different formula from this one. I guess it, it could be questionable, you know, this idea of using these arc lengths of a, of a circle, you know? I guess it makes sense. It looks believable right here, but if I was to apply, apply the same logic to the circle right here instead, you know what I mean? Like, if I was, in, if I was to apply the same logic to this, right, then as I look at these these sections like that. What I'm, what my, the idea that's being that we're investigating is to look at each delta theta, like right here, picking a point right there. And if I take this delta theta multiplied by r, I'm finding this distance right there. And then over here, I'm finding this distance right here, and then this distance right here, and then this distance right here, and this distance right here. So when you do this, you're literally finding the area, I mean, sorry, the length of each of these arcs yeah. and adding them up. And I think especially in this region, that could be a questionable method, right? Because this distance could be very different from this distance that it's supposed to represent. That makes sense. But so if you want to say, I mean, and more, 
towards zero. Mm -hmm. uh, would have, I was thinking more closer towards the actual axis. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't get anything at all. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the whole idea, like th this, this method works as long as, it, and this is key, as delta theta gets smaller, the accurate, the, my estimates should get better. But here, as delta theta gets smaller, I don't know that it gets better. You know what I mean? Because the, the segment that I'm trying to estimate right here is pretty wildly underestimated. I think this method works pretty good up here, but not so good over here. Uh, I just made a breakthrough in mathematics. They don't, they get lost. But wouldn't that be at the center of the circle, though, for the, the arc, for the BS? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it was uh, at the origin, but we're in public mm -hmm. coordinates. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So, so let me backtrack a little bit. In 7.2, right? Or we're doing the parametric equation. We also they also talk about the formula for arc with a parametric equations, right? And the formula I don't remember if we talked about this in uh, 152 integral calculus, but yeah, it can be done, right? You feel like it has the same picture. Right, this is the same picture I, I drew in integral calculus. But one thing I could do is I could just say, if there's a parameter, I can divide it into my delta t. And as t gets really, really small, this is basically going to be dx dt. This over here is dy dt. And if you have polar equations, then you can take the derivative and you have ready access to both of those. So the, so the strategy there is to, if I'm going to add up the Pythagorean theorem, the delta s's, is, is to really just add up a bunch of, um, yeah, Pythagorean theorem, right? Yeah, so like the square root of, or wait, yeah. Right. Delta S. So delta S delta T is the square root of delta, delta X delta, delta T squared square delta Y delta T squared delta T. Right? And this isn't polar coordinates, this is just right. parametric equations. As as T as the increments of T get really small. Then you end up with the integral of, I'll just write x prime squared, y prime, where the prime means with respect to t, <laughs> right? I'm being lazy, but make sure that's clear, times dt. That's what I've written over here. That's how you do it with parametric equations. And so to do this now with polar coordinates, right? It's kind of like, theta is kind of like a parameter. Theta is like the t here, right? So, um, let's see here. So d theta, right? Yeah. That equation with t theta. Yeah. So x equals, yeah, right there. In general, so the general formula is like this. If r is some fu function in terms of theta, right? Let's see if we can do this, yeah. I want to use the same notation in the book. If r is some function of theta, like in this particular case, it's 2 plus 2 sine theta, right? But I want to I make this a more general formula, right? So if R is just on some function of theta, like this one, then that means that X is equal to F of theta times the cosine of theta. Looking at that up there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Y is F of theta 
sine theta. These are my parameters. These are parametric equations. In, this is a, a the parameter is theta, but I'm, it's still a formula for x. It's still a formula for y, right? So therefore, dx d theta, in terms of my parameter, I'd have to use the product rule, right? There. F prime of theta times the cosine of theta plus F of theta times sine theta. Yeah, negative sine theta, right? right? dy d theta would be F prime of theta sine theta plus F of theta cosine theta. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what they did. Yeah. They, they, they often did the same thing just in the context of a problem. I'm trying to find the general formula, which is a little more than what's found in the book. So I'm just going to use this idea just with a, a theta instead of a t, right? I need to find uh, this squared plus this squared. I think that's why the author chose not to do it. it squaring this and squaring that it starts to get pretty hairy, you know? you know? But we'll give it a shot. dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared. So that's going to be this squared. That's going to be f prime at theta cosine of theta squared squared minus twice f prime of theta. You know what? Gosh, is there an easier way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be easier than easier than driving the formula. It might be easier just to like just swear for the, that particular problem and hope that it's simpler than what I have right. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, swearing each of these. I think, I, I suspect some stuff is going to simplify, but it has to get worse before it gets better. That's just the square of this right here. You know. I think after I write this one down, it'll start to simplify. Plus 2 f prime theta, f of theta, sine theta, cosine theta, because it's a little bit wrong, plus f theta squared, and cosine squared theta. Yeah, these will cancel. cancel. These will cancel. cancel. Yeah. And that will always happen. Right? Right. right. I do this in general. general. So these are always going to cancel. That's, that's good. good. Over, Over here, here, it's a, uh, well, that's, that's nice. nice. See, See how, how the, when I add these two together, they both have f prime squared. squared. Right. I can factor that out. I'm not allowed to do a sign script, it's supposed to be where it is. The one R, which is one. one. Yeah, yeah. R. <laughs> I'm really square to talk. Likewise, over here, here they both have the F squared, F squared. Factor that out, I'm allowed to do a sign script, it's supposed to be square, which is one. one. So, so it's just change the meaning. So we're looking at the parametric form, form of, of arc. arc. I can see, see that it's just going to go. go. It's just going to be the square root, root of f, f prime of theta, theta squared square plus, plus f, f of theta squared d theta. d theta. And since I since I decided I want to find the arc length from here to here, I guess it's just going to be twice the arc length from. Yeah. Where again, f of theta is this. F prime of theta would be the derivative of this, right? So yeah, it's not over yet. But you know, <laughs> once you expand those, you can take the square root of it, and it hopefully should be not too bad. You know, the derivative is nice because the two goes away. You're left with the two cosine theta, so four cosine squared theta plus the square of this, 
I guess I'd have to expand it, you know? It's gonna be four plus four sine theta. No, no, actually eight. Plus four sine squared theta. Theta. Nice thing is that first one and last one match up to four. Yes. Four plus four is eight. So it's basically eight plus sine theta. So you end up with. I guess they do it in the book. No. <laughs> no. No. Oh, actually, they chose different bounds. Isn't that the sort of right? Yeah, because they're doing a different equation. Yeah. Well, that's right, yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 So that's what's going on in 7.4. <laughs> no. The thing is, is, we're not even doing much of what we, not doing really anything different what we did before, we're just doing it with polar coordinates for a parametric equation. It's all the same thing, it's just in a different way. So, 